Ezekiel chapter 28. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. Now notice the word prince. John chapter 12. We're getting into a deep subject in this chapter. Probably your typical Baptist and pastors don't know anything about or don't believe. John 12, 31, the prince. We are looking at the prince and soon the king of Tyrus, but we're not. They explain yourself. We will. In John 12, 31, now judgment of, the, of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. That's Satan. Chapter 14, John 14, I hope that's 20, uh, 30 maybe, John 14, 30, hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and has nothing in me. Look at this one, John 16, 11. John 16, 11. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians Chapter 3, verse 2. Uh, no, verse. Or 2. Wait a minute, go, go back to chapter 2. My writing is terrible. Ephesians 2 2. When in times past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. And the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, notice the prince, notice the world, notice the disobedience, that's Satan. So when we go back to Ezekiel 28, I'm in no rush. See, this is the problem with the modern church. All right, we got to do three chapters in Sunday school. And then you wonder why people don't know nothing. It does not take 22 weeks to do the book of Revelation. It doesn't even take four weeks or one week to do the book of Ruth. So the Prince of Tyrus... Look at Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Verse 23, I hope. Matthew 16, 23. But he turned, Jesus, and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Now Jesus is talking to Peter. But Jesus is not talking to Peter. He's talking to Satan. And that's what we have in Ezekiel. We have the king of Tyrus, or the prince of Tyrus. Both of them will come up. But God is not speaking to them. He's speaking to the devil. Thus saith the Lord God, because thy heart is lifted up. Pride, proud, arrogant. And thou hast said, I am a God. Capital G. Now the Prince of Tyrus could have said that. But we're going to look in further who said that. Notice the capital G. 
that whoever said this, that I am not a god, I am God. But notice the word A, not the. Because in the realm of Satan and the devil and Lucifer, there are gods. And if you've not ever studied Roman and Greek mythology, you don't realize how many gods there are. If you don't know the land of India, you don't realize that there are gods. Polytheistic means many gods. There are many gods of the New Age movement. Mormons believe they could be gods if they're good enough. So in the realm of Satan, it's not the God, it's I'm the God of all the gods. And yet the scriptures, the Holy Spirit says, devils. Never notice it says devils? Because there's a devil, and under him there are devils, never demons. I sit in the seat of God. Uh, that's kind of hard to say it's the Prince of Tires now. Because the seat of God's in heaven. I doubt the Prince of Tires is ever going to see heaven. Because those who are, who are condemned, who, who end up with the great white throne judgment, the great white throne judgment is not before the throne of God. Matter of fact, it's Jesus Christ. In the midst of the sea. Interesting. Because Tyre is on a sea, not sea. Yet thou art a man. And not God. No, as God says, the capital G. You are not God. You're God. But you're not God. The Bible says the God of this world. You're either going to have God or you're going to have gods. And when you turn around and say God bless America, you mean the God that represents booze, sex, fornication, adultery, uh, uh, Abortion, lying, cheating, deceit. That's not God. That's God. Satan is the liar, John 8, 44. Yeah, Satan can bless. Do you know that? Satan can give you everything that God will allow Satan to give that person. It'll choke you. Though thou set thy heart, pride, as the heart of God. And we when and Lord Terry's by the time we come up with Ezekiel 28 and finish it, we're gonna learn a lot about Satan. That your average Christian doesn't know. Should know. Because we should not be ignorant of the devices of Satan, the scriptures say. So behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. All right, two things. Daniel was wise. Daniel and Ezekiel are in Babylon right now. And Satan is wise. Mark that down. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. <laughs> you cannot hide a secret from God. And you can't have a secret from Satan. They both know. Now God is all powerful, all knowing and everywhere. Satan is not. 
Satan has his, his ambassadors, the angels and the devils, that report to him. And when you have an underground church, you may be hiding from men, but you're not hiding from Satan. And your protection may be not that Satan doesn't know where you are, is God is allowing you to meet. With thy wisdom, okay, wise wisdom, and with thy understanding. Notice, okay, this, this is the end of the wise and wisdom and understanding. Notice Satan does not have, the devil does not have knowledge. Thou has gotten the riches. Add up all the wealth of Satan and his people. That's a quite a bit of wealth. And has gotten gold and silver into thy treasure. Yes, the prince of Tyre, but also the devil has. Amongst his human beings that serve him. And then when they die, he just takes those treasures and moves it to somebody else. By thy great wisdom, not just wisdom, great wisdom. And by thy traffic, it's got a K, it's okay. Has thou increased thy riches? Now in the land of Tyre, Traffic all around of all the shipping and all the transportation. The land is being made rich. In Job 1 and 2, the Bible says that Satan went up and down of the earth. <laughs> Satan can go in places on the earth where man can't. I mean, it's possible if he's going up and down the earth as Jesus walked the waters, so the devil imitates what Jesus does by walking the waters. Or something we can't understand or I don't understand. And thy heart is lifted up, pride, because of thy riches, there's America. We're a rich and wealthy nation. The church is described in Laodicea. We're rich. We have no need of nothing. That's Satan. That's satanic. The La Laodicean church age is marked by pride. But we got a great pastor. We got a great church. We have no need of nothing. We're rich. All right, there it is. You're Satan. You're satanic. That's why Jesus Christ is standing outside the door knocking. Scripture with scripture, I twisted nothing. You got it? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God. Because thou hast said, thou hast set thy heart as the heart of God. Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee. I have no idea. I mean, I don't know as far as the realm of the devil, anybody would be stranger to him. The prince of Tyrus? Okay, it could be any, any of the nations he doesn't know. The terrible of nations. They shall draw their swords against the beauty. Mark that down. We saw that the other night, how Tyrus described as beauty. And Babylon. The beauty of thy wisdom. So the wisdom of Satan is beautiful. And they shall defile thy brightness. Second Corinthians. 11. Thy brightness, scripture with scripture. I don't want to read the Old Testament. Second 
2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Ezekiel. Defile thy brightness. Scripture with scripture. I didn't twist nothing. And I'm going to tell you the dangers of the modern Bible is that when they mess with the words and they change the words and they add the words and they subtract the words and they footnote the words, you lose the cross references somewhere along the line. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and the pit's usually hell. Realize in the Antichrist in, in the tribulation period, they are going to churn against him. Thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the sea. Let me check something here. See how that's worded. All right, look at Revelation 20, verse 11. The seeds. So you can't change with the words. You can't add the words. You can't subtract to the word because you'll look. Because look, look what will you lose? I, I I don't know what the modern Bible say. I don't. I'm doing a modern Bible thing right now, but I, I'm not interested. Revelation 20 verse 11. I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, and for whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. Bye bye earth. Bye bye mother earth. Bye bye Mars. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. <laughs> I thought they were dead. And the books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things were written in the books according to their works. There's your works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Death and hell delivered the dead which were in them. Right back to Ezekiel. Scripture with scripture. I just learned that verse right now that showed up. Verse 8. Seeds. Revelation 20. And verse 7. Where is the pit? Verse 8. The pit. That's hell. Ezekiel 28. 8. Hell and seas. You read that in, in Revelation 20. Death. Look at death in verse 8. You read that in Revelation 20. How often do you think that the church today opens Ezekiel? Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee? Satan speaking before God. I am, I am. What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go back to the beginning, verse 2. I am a God. Do you know that this is said before Moses was even born? Before Moses asked God, what is thy name? So I can go to the children of Israel and tell them when they ask me, what's his name? I am that I am. We're going to see this is before, even before Adam and Eve. So before Adam and Eve, before Moses was even born, before the, the burning bush, before Moses goes back to the children of Israel and tells them, God has always been, I am that I am. And Satan, well, Lucifer says, I want that title. But see, the problem is with I am, for God is, he's always been. He, he's never had a beginning, and he's never had an end. 
I am is past, present, and future, but there is yet no past. Satan was created. He has a beginning. He can't be the I am. Because he's not always ever for Ben. Now he's got eternity. Future in hell like a fire. But he doesn't have an eternity past. There was a point in time that Satan was, we'll see that, Lord willing, that Satan was a created being. No one created God. So, verse 9. I am Big G God. You know, many, many brought the way that leaves instruction, many. Satan, the devil, is their God. Now, he may have other names. He may have the name of the Pope. He may have the name of a pastor. He may have the name of a Democrat. He may have the name of a Republican. He may have the name of a general. But he is God to them. But he's not God. But he's a God. And Satan is so full that I'm God. <laughs> but thou shalt be a man. The false prophet. The Antichrist. And no God. I wonder what modern Bibles do. I want they switch with that. In the hand of him that slayeth thee. Now Tyre will be slain. and it was, At this point he would be slain by Nebuchadnezzar. And then later on by Alexander the Great. But there are many rulers in history. The pharaohs were God leaders or God kings. And they were put on this earth to be a king by God. The Pope believes he's God. Thou shalt die the depths of the uncircumcised. That would be Gentiles. Now you can't stretch it all the way. Satan is not going to die in the hands of the Gentile nation. By the hands of strangers. Tire well. Uncircumcised would be the Babylonians. First attack. The Alexander, uh, Alexander the Great. The second attack. For I have spoken it. Saith the Lord. Now Isaiah. We can pick up more. What we need to look. And pick up where we're looking at now. Scripture with scripture. You know, when you got a Bible study and you're not running scripture to scripture to scripture, and you're just, you don't have a Bible study. And to read a portion of scripture say, what do you think is this? What, what do you feel about this? Can you give us your insights? What, what's your goal on this? What, that's not Bible study. Isaiah 14, 12. How art thou fallen from heaven? This is before the fall of man, Genesis 3. Oh, Lucifer. You know what Lucifer means? Light bearer. That's what it means. Didn't we read something? A brilliant star. Didn't we read something about the brightness in Ezekiel? Didn't we read something about the... the, the uh, the light of an angel and, and Paul writes. Isn't Hollywood the place of the lights and the stars? And the angels? But not the light of Jesus, not the angels of God. Son of the morning. And that's messed with in modern Bible. How art thou cut down to the ground? 
which did weaken the nation. I think we read about that, Ezekiel. For thou hast said in thy heart, Ezekiel, I will ascend into heaven. So he's already been cast out. I'm going to get back up there. I'm going to take that throne. I will exalt my throne before the stars of God. Satan had a throne in heaven. The song leader in heaven had a throne and it was above the throne of God. And the stars of God are the angels. Revelation chapter 1. I will sit in the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most, capital H, high, Ezekiel said, capital G, God. There it is. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. Ready? Ready for, you ready for the biblical definition? To the sides of the pit. There it is. That's Ezekiel. When he mentioned the pit in Ezekiel, scripture with scripture, Isaiah 14, 15, hell. Ready? They shall see, they they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man talking about Lucifer? Talking about the devil, talking about Satan. Is this the man? That's the cross reference. Go back to Ezekiel. I mean, don't go back to Ezekiel, but that's the raw cross reference. Go back to Ezekiel. That made the earth to tremble. And did shake kingdom. That made the world a wilderness. And destroyed the cities thereof. Look at that. And you thought it was World War One, World War Two. That opened not the house of his prisoners. All the kings of the nations. Uh, well, nations, I think they would be uncircumcised. Even all of them, he lie. I mean, excuse me, lying glory. Every one of his own house. But thou art cast out like gravel, like an abominable branch. Jesus is the branch. Here is the counterpart, the abominable branch. As the raiment of those that are slain. Wasn't there a slain talking about killing in Ezekiel? Thrust through with a sword. I don't know, Ezekiel, if we'll come to it, but I think there was a sword mentioned. That go down to the stones of the pit and cast, cast and then carcass treaded under feet. Uh, Genesis 3.15. There's somewhere where he says he walked, I think somewhere he says he walks through stones of fire. Isaiah 14.19. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast thou has destroyed thy land. The earth was the devil's before Adam got it. And the slain and slain thy people. The seed of an evildoer shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. Here we go. I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off, what? Who? There's Revelation chapter, I mean, there's old Babylon, but that's also Babylon Revelation 18. And remnant son, nephew, saith Lord, I will also make a possession for the bitter. That's birds. Didn't we read about birds? So, we are in the realm of satanic. We are in the realm of Lucifer. We are in the realm of the devil and Satan. 
and your typical modern Christian in their modern line to see in church age. And we're going to go squirting the devil with a water gun in hell and all that. Don't even know who the devil is. Even Michael the Archangel, as far as I know, the only Archangel in the Bible. Even he doesn't contend with the devil over Moses' body. And that Michael and his angels and Satan and his angels have a battle in heaven. And, and it's not victory because Satan and his angels are cast out. They're not dead. I don't mess with the devil. I don't challenge the devil. I leave it alone. And I heard people rebuke the devil. and I, I just leave the devil alone. Because I know one thing about the devil. When I don't challenge him, and my heart gets lifted up, or I get big proud in the mouth, I get foolishly speaking or thinking, God will say to the devil, okay, go there and get him. And the devil will whip my butt. Okay. I don't want to mess with you. I'm not ignorant of his devices, but I don't even want to be anywhere near the devil. I don't like the devil. But I know he's real. And I've known I've laid in bed in, in, in valleys. And I've laid in bed for no reason. I woke up in the middle of the night and said, you know what? Is God really true? Really God all powerful? Is there anything too hard for me? And the devil starts saying, yeah, he's a, he can't answer your prayer. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. And this is a very important lesson that we need to go into, and I'm not going to do it. Okay, we're done. So we can finish the Bible. Hey, look, we did every chapter of the Bible. No, we didn't. I know a church right now. You know, we, we, we do every chapter of the Bible, and I think in three or four years, we've done every chapter. We're going back there. And I've been in that. And you don't do every chapter. Judges had three chapters, four chapters, you know, it's just it, 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 redundant, it, it's repetitious, we're going to move on to the next book. Oh, you liar. You liar. So we're going to be at the next three nights, we're going to look at Lucifer, we're going to look at Satan, we're going to look at the devil, and we're going to see what the Bible says, not what Stiley says, not what the Baptist Church says, what the Bible says. Lord willing, we'll move on to these studies.